having a good day so far. Um, it is day 11 of 21 days of prayer. Um, I'm going to just give it just a minute and let a few people log in live so you uh, can be with us live this morning. I, I'm going to, uh, maybe I can give you a little update on my family. Many of you know that, uh, you know, Chelsea uh, had COVID um, early August, actually late Jan July uh, into August. And uh, just to update, you know, we've been hunkered here at home. And, and I like my house, but not this much. <laughs> um, we've been here for quite some time. And um, Chelsea is all better. Um, she still has a little bit of fatigue. That's one of the, just not the, a symptom. It's a symptom of COVID, but it's also a side effect of just having it. And so, um, but other than that, she's good. She's completely back uh, to normal. And um, she's not been contagious for a week now. And technically, she's good to go um, do whatever she wants. Uh, me and the boys were all tested after Chelsea was no longer contagious. And, um, and the doctor says, hey, you guys are good to go. But we're actually giving it another week after what the doctor said just to play it safe. You know, being in ministry and just uh, a people person as we are. Uh, we wanted to just play it incredibly safe and give it an extra, an extra week, so that way when we go back into the real world, uh, nobody has to worry. Uh, any kind of thoughts you have can be uh, alleviated. So uh, that's kind of the Denson family update. We're all doing really well. Uh, we are so grateful for the way that that you have cared for us during this time, whether it be hanging out. Um, uh, or, I'm sorry, not hanging out. That'd be great. Uh, sending gift cards for dinners. Um, actually, Sarah Antinor um, has had her kids write Chelsea like a get better card um, every single day. And so every single day in the mail, uh, there's like a get better card. But her kids are really young, so it's really just scribblings and uh, they don't know how to spell anything. Uh, but we'll give them some, some grace being that they're five and uh, I think three or something like that. But um, let me get started in, 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 in the prayer prompt. Uh, today uh, I, I'm excited to be able to be available to to kind of to hang out with you in this way this morning um, I've had two things on my heart the last couple of days that I thought we could discuss briefly this morning as we move into our prayer whether you're watching this this morning or, or later on uh, when you have time uh, two things is this I want to focus our prayer this morning on asking God to help us do two things one is Help us, God, to love you more. And then the second thing is, help us to love people more. So we want to love God, and we want to love people. I've been reading in Colossians the last couple of, of days, and I want to read to you from, from Colossians chapter 3, and then kind of use that as a springboard for, for what I want us to, to be praying about this morning. He says, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on the things above, not on earthly things. And then the author goes on to say, he says, you know, put all of these things away. Put, put to death um, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. He says, you know, put to death sexual immorality, impurity, lust evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. And he just goes on, put away anger, put, a, put away rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. All of these things that we need to adjust now that we have become followers of Christ. This is how we used to live, but as we have been raised with Christ, let's transition into this way of life. Put away these sinful things. In verse 12, he continues, he says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in unity. I love that idea that now that we've been raised with Christ, our way of life should change. Our character defects should change. But we do this by putting on 
love which unites us together. And so I, I, I want us to, maybe, maybe we have to shift because I think for so many of us, we look at, okay, I've been raised with Christ. Now I've got to put away anger. I've got to put away pride. I've got to put away malice. I've got to put away sexual immorality. I've got to put away all of these things that were so common to me. Uh, put away anger. I, I, I have a, some of us have a relationship with anger that is very difficult for us to put down. Uh, and 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 what w- what the scriptures are saying here is that w- he wants us to put these things down. And so how do we do that? What I want us to, to think about today is this: Jesus wants our heart more than our obedience. Jesus wants our hearts more than our obedience. Now this does not mean Jesus does not want our obedience. But for so many of us, as we walk into a relationship with Jesus and we look at what it means to love God, we equate that to not doing this, not doing that, not doing this, uh, not being angry anymore, not dealing with sexual immorality. And we think if I can do these things, that means I love God more. But I don't think that's what the scriptures are teaching us here. I don't think I think Jesus wants our heart more than our obedience. And so the idea that I'm talking about right now is this idea that we need to lean into love and obedience will follow. Lean into love and our obedience will follow. Because if we only focus on obedience, moving forward loses its beauty, doesn't it? How many of you have been there? In the Freedom Group, we talk about this idea of of just saying no to our sin Because we're just trying to see how long we can abstain from it. Does that make sense? But what if instead we kind of put away so much pressure on ourselves and said, you know what? I can't, I can't deal with, uh, with, I've got to say no to, to my temptations today. And I just got to try to make it till tomorrow. What if we kind of took all that pressure off and we said, no, today I'm going to focus on loving Jesus. Today I'm going to open up. I love, I love what John, and I've been doing this. Start with a worship song. Start today. You know what? Yeah, I've got these temptations. I've got this anger inside of me. I've got whatever it is inside of me. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to some worship music this morning. And I'm going to see if I can shake it. Because I just want to fall in love with Jesus every single day. I am just convinced that if I pursue Jesus with my heart, then obedience will follow. You know, the same is true for my wife. I, 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 I'm married to Chelsea, and I don't just walk around going, oh, no, I'm, I, I can't do this. I can't do that. I've got to make sure I'm focused on this, and I've got to be a good husband. No, no, I just love my wife. I, I really enjoy her company. I enjoy her laugh. I, I, I enjoy being around her, and I just try to nurture that relationship. And honestly, I, I don't really ever think about the other stuff because I'm in love with with her. What would happen if you shifted your focus from being obedient to loving Jesus? I'm convinced that obedience would follow. The second thing that I want us to focus on this morning, uh, we talked about loving God. Uh, I want us to talk about loving people. Loving people. You know, we are in this, we're in, it's August, and so it's just been an eternity at this point. It feels like for some of us, And um, in every season of our lives, uh, we're supposed to love people. In every season of your life, you are called to love people. I, I, I draw, I make drawings in my, um, my journal, but I'm not, I'm not an artist. I'll prove that right now. And, and I, I had this idea that, you know, we're all on this journey. And this year, our journey looks so different than last year, right? For some of us, we're having to make career choices. For some of us, we're having to make important family decisions. Some of us are dealing with tragedy personally, um, stuff that's happened to us in our life. And for many of us, we've come along this fork in the road, right? And we're having to choose what's next for us. And I had this idea that, you know, whether or not you're having to choose some relationship things or whether or not you're having to choose a path of your career, this is kind of the idea I had. It may not make sense to you, but it does to me. So here we are, right there, and this is our journey, and then we hit a fork in the road, right? 
and we got to choose, you know, hey, this is what my relationship's going to look like, or hey, this is what my career's going to look like. No matter where you're at on your journey, you're called to love people. So whether you're here and you're just kind of cruising right now and you're loving life, you're supposed to love people. Or maybe you're right here and you've got a big decision to make. You know, I, I don't know what the answer to that question, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what job you should take. I don't know what you should do in whatever you're dealing with. But I do know this, even in that moment, you're supposed to love people. And maybe you choose a new career. or Maybe you choose a, a hard, uh, make a hard choice. Either way, I know this, along the way, you're supposed to love people. You're called to love people people there is never a season in your life where putting down love is a good idea i was talking to a good friend of mine yesterday and i said listen you're in a season right now because some of us sometimes we're in this season where we got to put some things down we got to give ourselves grace we've got to put some things down we got to say no to some things so we can say yes to other things love is never one of those things we are never called to put love down we are called to to love people. And I guarantee you, like so, like me, so many of you have a neighborhood just like this, right? And you know what this is? This is an opportunity for me to love people. And you know, sometimes you love them, uh, sometimes they feel it immediately, sometimes it takes time. But we're always called to love people. So just, there, there is opportunity in your day to day to love people someone. In fact, um, you don't even know it. I'll tell you now, uh, we were taken care of so well by so many of you and loved so well that uh, my neighbor, two houses down, who we've just grown uh, really close with, um, th she was sick. Wasn't sure if she had COVID or what, you know, what, didn't know, but she wasn't feeling great. So in the middle of Chelsea feeling bad, I text and say, hey, I want to buy you dinner tonight. And they said, no, Robbie, Chelsea's got COVID. You don't need to do that. And I said, well, let me, let me be more clear. Uh, the gathering has taken care of our family so well that I have gift cards to Grubhub and tell me what you want from Chick-fil-A. And I was able to love them through the way in which I had been loved. And that's what Jesus has done for us, guys. Jesus has loved us so well that in response, we can take that love and carry it into our lives. We are called to love God people in this season. Love looks like showing up. Love doesn't think about it. I love what Bob Goff says. Love doesn't think about it. Love doesn't have good intentions. Love does it. Love does it. And so as we move into prayer this morning, I just want to ask a question. How are you loving God? Are you loving God through your obedience? I don't think he wants that. I think God wants your love through your heart. So how are you loving God and how are you loving people? Who have you been planning to love? Write their name down and then ask yourself, how can I follow through with it? Because people don't feel our intentions on how much we love them. They feel it when we call them. They feel it when we write them a note. They feel it when we show up. They feel it when, they, when, when we answer their phone call. And so that's my, um, that's my uh, ramblings of a tired guy at 6.45 in the morning. But I hope that that leads you into some good conversation and community with God this morning. Let me pray and uh, send us off into day 11 of 21 days of prayer. Jesus, this morning we come to you and we thank you that you have given us a model of love, that you have shown us that love requires sacrifice, love requires action. Um, God, that you have shown us what it's like to look out into our workplaces, our cities, our neighborhoods, and, and you've shown us what it looks like to care for others. I pray today that you would open our, um, our hearts and our minds and our eyes and our ears to opportunity. Jesus, this morning, we want to say we love you. Uh, help us to, to see you and not our sin. Help us to see you and not our temptation. Help us to, to fall in love with you so that we no longer have to say no to sin, but we just get to say yes to you. Help us to, to shift our thinking, to shift our focus from a position of I've got to be strong enough to know I just got to love Jesus more. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, uh, Hope everyone has a great day, and I look forward to being back in um, 
in front of people soon, and I am looking forward to it. Have a good one.